making a stop on his training camp tour is NFL Network's Tom Pelissero, but it is kind of like in your backyard a little bit. That's true. Nice to get home yeah. and reintroduce myself to my wonderful <laughs> wife who's been taking care of everything and my children. So be back on the road tomorrow. And it's obviously a team that you cover a lot, you know a lot, and I saw you having multiple conversations with the guys around here. So what's the vibe that you're getting from this coaching staff in year two? Well, I think that it's obviously a different group because there's so many of those big name players that everybody, including fans, have been used to hearing. The Eric Kendrickses of the world and Zedarius, of course, was part of the team last year. Patrick Peterson moving on after a couple of years. Adam Thielen, Dalvin Cook. What you've got now is some of those still core building block players, guys like Justin Jefferson, TJ Hawkinson, who they want to be a big part of this team moving forward. And then you still got a veteran quarterback in Kirk Cousins. And so I know I've seen all the stuff on other TV networks, you know, predicting the Vikings to struggle this season and whatnot. Listen, they don't think that way in this building. They're fully anticipating that they're going to be competitive once again. They're trying, as they've used the words, competitive rebuild mm -hmm. in the past here. And they have added some pieces that they're hoping are going to make up for some of what they lost and more. Daniil Hunter signing uh, what, about a week ago or a couple of days ago. I mean, just it was it was such a boost to everyone here in this defensive room. What do you think he adds to this linebacking front, especially now that Marcus Davenport's in the mix? Well, that's going to be one of the great unknowns this season, too, is Brian Flores and his mm -hmm. defense bringing in a completely different scheme. Historically, Flores comes from the Patriots system where they're very game plan specific. And you might see totally different fronts, totally different blitz packages, different operation from week to week based on their opponent and trying to take away what the opponent does best, make them try to beat you left handed. So with Daniel Hunter, we've seen, obviously, he's been very productive when he says, hand in the dirt, playing from a down position and rushing the passer. Last mm -hmm. year we saw him dropping a little bit more into coverage. I don't know that that'll be taken entirely away just because, again, they're going to be very game plan specific. But one of the things also that the guys who come out of that New England program do is figure out what a player does best and mm -hmm. have them do that a lot. So Daniil Hunter, I would imagine you're going to get plenty of opportunities to get after the passer. You mentioned Flores' strengths in developing players, and it's a very young cornerback room with some names that yeah. feel like they have a lot to prove this season. What do you make of that competition right now currently at camp? Well, I think that, you know, there's a guy like Caleb Evans who, mm -hmm. you know, had concussion issues last year. As long as he's healthy, he should be one of the better corners on this team. You know, there's going to be plenty of competition in other fronts as well. And when you're going from the veteran likes of a Patrick Peterson uh, to some of these younger guys, there's always going to be you know, something of an unknown. I actually ran into Patrick Peterson a few <laughs> days ago in Latrobe, and he was saying the same thing, which was just, I'm really curious to see mm -hmm. how they end up playing this thing. And so that's what they'll work through through the course of uh, training camp here. Obviously, they brought in Byron Murphy, who can be an outside player. You know, some people would argue he's more fit to play inside mm -hmm. here. But they're going to continue to experiment out here. And uh, from week to week, it might look different. When you're out here at these training camps, you're seeing these teams go against one another. Not too many joint practices yet or games to really watch. What are you looking for when you're standing on these sidelines and observing practice? I try not to look too much because ultimately I don't know what I'm looking at. <laughs> I try to ask the people who are a lot smarter than me what they're seeing on the field. Mm -hmm. I think some of the things you can pick up on are tempo, um, the vibe around the team. You watch players on the sideline, how they interact with teammates, especially mm -hmm. if you've got, I was in Green Bay a couple of days ago, how is Jordan Love interacting with players? How are they getting in and out of the huddle? You pick up on some of those things, and then obviously you look for the splash plays. I mean, as much as you, you, know, you look at every snap and these mm -hmm. coaches review the practice tape every day, there's going to be the plays that jump out. If you're a young defensive back who has a takeaway, if you're a young receiver who might be below the radar and makes a couple of plays, all of a sudden you might be coming mm -hmm. up a little bit on the radar here. So you try not to, again, because I'm watching one practice at all these teams to come away going, boy, this guy's great, oh, or this guy's terrible. I might have been there on the best day. I might have been there on the worst day. But, again, you can kind of get just the vibe around the team, and I always think that's really interesting, especially going to all these camps back to back because you can make that comparison in your head. Well, you said this question right at the top. You just came from Green Bay's camp. So how is Jordan Love looking? I gotta ask. Well, again, I was there for one day, <laughs> um, and, and this is something Matt Lafleur talked about: was mm -hmm. they had lacked some of the tempo. But that's not just about Jordan Love. It's also mm -hmm. the fact that you've got all their wide receivers are second or first year players, rookies, and their two tight ends are rookies right now. You have veterans in the backfield with Aaron Jones and AJ Dillon, but you have so much youth around him that when coaches are substituting, when they're putting in the plays and are trying to get the right people on the field, and you got young guys who might not be picking things up as up as quickly, is that the quarterback's fault or is that just about the overall operation? Yeah. It's going to be a growth process this year uh, for the Packers. With Jordan Love, we know we can throw it. We know we can move. He converted a fourth and ten in the two-minute drill when I was out there. But down in and down out.
about mm-hmm. what is he going to be as a player. That's going to be one of the great mysteries heading into the season, and it will start to be told in week one at Chicago. <laughs> That's true. Well, the NFC North is definitely going to be a competition, one to watch. No one really knows what's going to go on. As you said, people are really doubting the Vikings this year. I think there's there's no question, and I may or may not send the occasional text with a screenshot from TV to some of the people here, just saying, "Look it, it's everywhere. it's everywhere. Nobody's expecting anything from you." I mean, listen, you don't bring back Kirk if you're thinking we're just going to tank out here. Nor is that something the Wilfs have ever espoused. Mm-hmm. Nor is it what Quasi and Kevin want to do with this football team. They want to continue to compete. They ultimately want to lock up those core position players like a Jefferson, like a Hawkinson for the long haul here. But they knew they had to get younger. They had to make some tough decisions from a salary cap perspective to make sure they have the resources to sign those really important players for the future. You're hoping that your young guys, the draft picks, Jordan Addison, who I don't think we even talked about here. I know he's had a really good camp on Mm -hmm. the field so far. If he makes a mistake, he cleans it up quickly. I think you'll see a lot of him on the field as a rookie here. There's some things to be excited about. I understand the national skepticism because of all the big names that are gone. We don't know what the defense will look like under Brian Flores Mm -hmm. either, but something tells me the Vikings will be a tad more competitive than people are predicting. Well, we love to hear it. We also love your insight. Thank you so much for being here at Vikings Training Camp. NFL Network's Tom Pelissero.